Oh, okay. All right, can you guys see me now? Ho hopefully, yeah, I, I had to click one button. So I'm still new in this uh, live thing. Uh, so Shapnil, Sharat, Pankaj, let me know if you can uh, see me and hear me okay. I'll wait for your confirmation. Should be able to see it now. Um, it's showing me live. It's working now. All right, we'll get started. So yeah, hello guys, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, today we're gonna talk about cloud and DevOps interviews, how to prepare for them, how to study, and we'll also go over some sample questions, or if you have any other questions, we'll go over that. Excellent, so loud and clear. So yeah, today is Monday, I know, but today it's off. It's holiday in USA. It's also holiday in UK. I know India, it's evening. Um, so yeah, and it's a little bit chilly here in USA. My parents still live in India and they tell me that it's like super hot where I am. Um, okay, cool. So let me share my screen. I wanted to go over how to prepare for a particular uh, interview. Okay, and uh, how, how did I do it? And then we'll go over some uh, viewer questions and answers. Okay, so let me minimize this. Okay, you can see the chat thing here. Okay, so let's say you want to prepare for a cloud interview or DevOps interview for a, a particular company or for a particular role. So these are the two things that you have to do. So first, you have to go to Glassdoor, okay? And this is how I prepare as well. So uh, once the Glassdoor comes, let's say I want to put DevOps Architect, okay? And here, you have to select DevOps Architect Interviews. I wanna make it a little bigger. Okay, I wanna change my location and then search again. Okay, so now you will see some of the interview questions for DevOps Architect. But, okay, unfortunately not many DevOps Architect questions. That's not good. So let's try with DevOps Engineer. How about that? Okay. And then there should be some interview questions that shows. Okay, let me know what. Let me do this. Why are they showing like this? Looks like that changed a little bit. Okay, how about network engineer interviews? Okay, oh, here we go. So I don't know, the glass door seems to be like a little slow or something. So once you put network engineer and you can select this interview tab as well, what I do is like, I will copy paste all these interviews in like a spreadsheet on these interview questions. So I'll say given a very large existing workload with thousands of external connections, how would you add an additional few hundred connections? So I'll just copy this and put it in a spreadsheet. So I'll go down for multiple pages so you can see there are multiple pages of different questions and I will collect all these questions. And then I will uh, remove the duplicates. A lot of these questions will be duplicate. In some cases, there are answers also given. So I will go through it and then collect the final list of questions. And in some cases, I'll copy the answer as well. And then comes the practicing part. So there's another new thing that's actually added now, which was not there before. So if you go to LinkedIn, okay, and then let's say you go to jobs. So this is a new option. When I was preparing for my Amazon interview, it was not there. Uh, see this more icon? So if you click this more icon, there is this thing called interview prep. So if you click this interview prep, uh, you can see these categories and some sample questions like tell me about yourself, greater strength. Uh, this is like a general category, right? And the good thing is there are some sample answers which are given here as well. So I find it like pretty, pretty good actually. Um, to see all this answer, you have to have premium. So LinkedIn gives you one month of free premium. 
So I highly recommend when you are preparing, just get that one month of free premium and prepare for that. Now you can change categories. Uh, let's say you are going for a project manager or uh, let's say software engineer. So you can click software engineer and then it's going to show you questions for software engineer. Uh, for example, example, how would you design a ride sharing app? Uh, and then there are answers as well here. So now, if you want to practice this stuff, right, you can even practice this. So, but that you have to pay a little bit extra. So you can, let's say for this question, uh, explain how you design a ride sharing app. You can practice and get feedback. So you can click and you can record a video of yourself. So this is like excellent. Uh, you can record a video, write a response, and then some uh, expert will take a look at your, at your video or the response and give you feedback. So another thing I do is um, try, to, try to figure out the hardest round of the interview. Right? Generally, whiteboarding is pretty tough. System design is pretty tough. So I actually have a whiteboard that I practice with. Like I have my whiteboard sitting here. I'm going to show you real quick. So you can see there is my whiteboard and I use that whiteboard to practice for my interviews and all that stuff. So I highly recommend doing that. Uh, you can also um, record yourself, but that's a little bit awkward at times, right? So you can record yourself and view how you are looking, how you are here, uh, um, sounding, all that stuff. So, okay, so those two things I wanted to cover. Okay, so I think I touched my camera and video went away. So don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it back. Give me one second. Okay, let me remove this. Here goes the display capture. Where is? Lot of technical difficulties today. Okay, here we go. Okay, see I have a backup. Okay, so does this make sense so far, guys and girls? Like how to look up questions, how to uh, practice, how to know what kind of questions you should expect for a role. Is it making sense uh, so far? And then we're gonna go uh, some sample questions as well, but just wanted to make sure uh, this is making sense. So let me go check you what you guys saying. Okay. So will the video be uploaded? Yes, video will be uploaded. Uh, Cloud, Sova, Cloud Seva Academy in Nepal, also it's evening, I'm from Nepal. All right, Cloud Seva, uh, the land from Mount Everest. Okay, so now you have these uh, questions and answers that you practice. Now the next thing that I do is, uh, I also look up my interviewers. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergy is a little bad today. So what do I mean? So generally, uh, before the interview, uh, the recruiter will send you the name of the interviewer who will be interviewing you, right? So what I will do is I will go to the LinkedIn, okay? And let's say uh, my interviewer is this guy. Let's say Simon Rice, okay? So uh, you can see he's a worldwide technology lead. Um, so what I try to do is try to see the interviewer's area of depth. Uh, so let's say I scroll down. So he is handling global thought leader, but then it's only for a month, right? Uh, so if I go beyond this, so in AWS, he was enterprise solutions architect telecoms. So he will know stuff about telecommunications and networking. And if I go down, uh, see he's the vice president of Oracle. So he was covering Oracle enterprises architecture, databases, data integrations, Head of database service. So that's like pretty heavyweight title, right? Oracle DBA team leader, senior Oracle DBA. So you could bet like 99.9% .9 that he's gonna ask you database questions, right? That's number one. And number two, make sure you don't fluff or you don't uh, bullshit around database questions to him. Right? So he, this guy knows his database. So uh, if he asks uh, a questions about SQL versus NoSQL or like how would you optimize a database, 
uh, you should look up all the stuff, like look up Glassdoor around database specialist and look up those questions and prepare because high chance you will get questions from Simon about database. Uh, so that's number one. Another thing is uh, going back to these uh, Glassdoor questions, always try to think like what other follow-up questions you can get, right? So let's say this question. Explain the difference between a TCP and UDP, right? So you have the answer for that, but then also try to think for a network engineer interview, what else can you ask on this? Maybe, can you give me an example of a TCP? Can you give me an example of UDP? That kind of stuff. So I'll give another example because I know a lot of you guys are on cloud and DevOps. Uh, so let's say this question comes a lot in, uh, in any general interviews is uh, difference between uh, SQL and NoSQL databases, right? So you, you, you tell, tell them the difference, but then also try to think like the follow-up questions like uh, in what areas NoSQL database is not appropriate, right? Or what areas SQL database is not suitable? Or can you give me a couple of examples of SQL databases? Uh, can you, how do you optimize a SQL database and how do you optimize a NoSQL database, right? So it's not gonna be all the questions that you get from this Glassdoor, they are not gonna be like word to word, uh, but if you try to think what other uh, co additional questions that could be tied to it, uh, you could get a lot of good questions and practice those. So, okay, let me look, the, look at the chat real quick. And, uh, okay, Mansi, does DevOps engineer require developer level coding or making software as a part of the job? No, Mansi, DevOps engineer does not require um, coding. So when we talk about coding, uh, there are two different kinds of coding. So one is your traditional, um, you know, like Java, C, C++ kind of stuff where you create uh, applications. Second type of coding, which is not really coding, is infrastructure as code, right? So that's like CloudFormation, Terraform. So those are more like script. So for DevOps engineer or DevOps architect, you must know infrastructure as code. So you need to know how to use uh, CloudFormation or Terraform uh, to spin up cloud infrastructure. Right? So that, that kind of coding or scripting, you need to know. But you don't need to know traditional coding. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Please discuss question. Okay, Sharat. Yeah, so let's go over some of, the, some of the questions that you might get. So one thing is in the uh, cloud interview, you have to know the basics of the cloud like why do you want to use cloud like what is the difference between cloud and data center right so you will be asked like why should i go to cloud so you will, you should say like hey for cloud uh, there's high availability scalability agility more security all that stuff and then there's a high chance you will be asked uh, like can you explain what is high availability right so don't just uh, say the definition, give an example, right? Say that uh, it shows that you actually worked in a system and you thought about it. Like, uh, okay, uh, Sarah, madam, uh, like this is a three-tier architecture and in this three-tier architecture, uh, the single point of failure is the database or the backend server that's running the application code. Uh, if this server goes down or this database goes down, uh, then the system goes down. Uh, but to make it highly available, we have to have redundancy so that even if one server goes down or one data center goes down or one availability zone goes down, uh, the system will still continue to serve traffic, right? So how did I do this in the cloud? Uh, so if my software is running on EC2, uh, I will create another EC2 and in another availability zone and have a load balancer distribute the traffic across these two availability zone. So in this way, even if one EC2 goes down in one availability zone, or even if the whole availability zone goes down, your application will still be up and running. So always try to give like a little bit of example, like don't just give the definition, 
you have to make yourself different from the other uh, candidates, right? So uh, I always give like a real example, uh, not just actual definition. Okay. Um, uh, we'll go over some more questions, uh, Sharat. Uh, Bhavani Shankar SD, which certification you advise me to do in AWS? So let me make myself uh, bigger again. Give me one second. So yeah, so depending on the area, Bhavani, right? So um, if if you are going for DevOps role, then you should get uh, the CSOPS admin uh, certification, the CSOPS uh, admin for AWS. And then if you are feeling confident, you could do uh, uh, the DevOps Pro. If you are going for hands-on uh, developer, uh, then you do the developer associate exam. Uh, and it's always a good idea to do the solutions architect associate uh, because it always teaches you the basics and how each functions or each service uh, interact with each other. Uh, and if you're going for solutions architect role, like I said, solutions architect associate and then a solutions architect professional. Uh, so hopefully that answered the question. Sai Kumar, all right. This is a good question. How to explain the real-time project flow in the interview if you don't have previous experience? So this is where you have to study and do proof of concept, right? So when you are going for a cloud and DevOps interview, you have to do some hands-on proof of concepts. You cannot just study or get a certification and then show up to the interview. So it might work in some cases, but not in all like, so if you're going for a good company, let's say VMware, or even if you're going for TCS, CTS, there are a lot of competition right now in the market, right? If you look at, uh, look around your friend, how many people have certificates, you will see a lot more than it used to be. Uh, so when you do this hands-on POC, so let's say DevOps, you are going for DevOps interview. So you have to have these three POC that you need to do. Number one, you need to know with a DevOps tool, either Jenkins or GitLab or Code Pipeline or whatever you want, how to provision infrastructure in cloud. So you have to know how to, how to spin up VMs, how to spin up container uh, using infrastructure as code. That's number one. Number two, uh, you need to know how to uh, deploy infrastructure for like a two tier architecture, such as like a server, some code, and then a database. And you can get this from like GitHub, like the server, like actual code, but you do need to know how you deploy it because when you do this, you will face issues. An interviewer is gonna ask you for what kind of challenges you faced uh, doing DevOps or doing solutions architecture, right? And number three, if you're going for DevOps interview or solutions architect interview, you need to have some hands-on experience with uh, deploying uh, container, Kubernetes, or serverless, right? So you have to, container preferably, container is super hot right now. So when you do this hands-on stuff, even if you are not working in a real world project, you will gain experience. You will know uh, like uh, what challenges you face and you cannot do that just by doing the certification. Okay, let's see, uh, Dhiman. Having three years of experience in software development with product-based companies, but seeking good interest in DevOps, how to switch into this domain in product-based? So uh, if you mean like a product management plus DevOps, uh, then you already know the product management part, it seems like. So you know how Agile works, how sprints work, the two weeks window, how to do estimate, all that stuff. So that's gonna help you. Uh, and for the DevOps part, uh, you need to know the infrastructure as code and the DevOps theory and couple of the flows. You don't need to go super hands-on like a DevOps architect or DevOps engineer, but you need to know how DevOps work. So uh, if uh, you are managing or doing a product management of a, a DevOps product, at least so that you have an idea like what are the different phases of DevOps. And in an interview, you will be asked like, can you tell me what is uh, continuous integration versus continuous deployment versus continuous delivery? So going back to uh, Sharath's question, he asked, hey, what are some of the cloud and DevOps question? So this is another very common question. 
uh, what is CI and what is CD. So a regular candidate is just going to say CI is continuous integration and explain it. And CD, they will say it is continuous uh, deployment and explain. But a, a good candidate will say, well, CD could be two things. One, it could be continuous delivery or two, it could be continuous deployment and then explain the differences. So you can look up my videos, what are the differences, or Google, what are the differences. Uh, but yeah, a good candidate always shows that they know a little bit extra. Crazy Ved, I like your name, Crazy Ved. Uh, hopefully, uh, I don't know what kind of crazy you are. Um, the certification is mandatory for getting job. So think about this. There are two, two uh, paths, like or two uh, steps of getting the job. Number one, which is which is a quite difficult one, is noticing, getting noticed by the recruiter. Like, at the end of the day, uh, the rec there are so many people, recruiter needs to pick you up. And when the recruiter goes into LinkedIn, they have a different view. Like, they can search for candidates uh, who has uh, DevOps certification, who has Terraform certification, uh, who has their skill rating or who has completed skill quizzes in LinkedIn. So if you have a certification, you, you are going to pop up, like you will be in their uh, search criteria and it's like it's going to be a little bit easier, right? Uh, number two is the actual interview. So when you go for the certification, um, <clears throat> not only it helps you get picked up by the recruiter, but also certification teaches you like some basic components. Like for the DevOps certification, it's gonna teach you CI, CD, different kinds of CD. What are the DevOps tools that is available, right? And how to use them. What is the advantage of code build? What is the difference? What is the difference between Jenkins and code build? That kind of stuff. So that gives you an edge. It's like you are going to a, a fancy dinner and uh, you're hoping to meet someone. So if you are wearing a suit or a nice uh, outfit, it just increases your chances, right? Uh, but yeah, you can wear t-shirt and jeans too. Uh, so, okay, uh, I digress. Uh, I have finished where, okay. Uh, Tamzidul Martin said, I have finished a DevOps program where I have Lean learned to build CICD pipeline using Jenkins, Maven, Ansible, AWS. But now I'm trying a hard time scheduling a job. What would be your suggestion for me? I think you meant securing a job. So <clears throat> seems like you already been through uh, multiple interviews, right? So I would, I would go and practice. Seems like you already have the knowledge, <clears throat> but maybe your delivery is little lacking. So. Believe it or not, I used to be really bad at English. So you guys sometimes tell me my accent is a little weird or sometimes my sentences are a little weird. It's because um, I grew up in a part of India, West Bengal, where uh, English was taught very, like much, much later, right? So that's why I picked up English much later and still I am not like super fluent. My sentences are kind of screwed up um, and I always have this funny accent. The trick is to keep on practicing, right? So I used to be bad at presentation. So the whiteboarding, I used to suck at it. So I kept on practicing. I used to record myself uh, in, in the computer and then I would just listen to it and, and uh, change it and improve it. So I don't know if that's the issue, a thumbsy duel by, sec by securing a job. Uh, but if you're having a hard time getting noticed by a recruiter, uh, try to um, make your LinkedIn profile better. So I have a separate video, search in my uh, channel, how to make your LinkedIn profile uh, like stand out. Um, so that way it will help you to get noticed by recruiters. Jafar said, hello sir, can you please make videos on DevOps projects? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I already have some, uh, I, can, I intend to make some more. Bhavani Shankar SD. Uh, DevOps or cloud, which I need to pick as I'm new to both. So are you like a fresher or you already have some experience? Uh, so if you are a fresher, I would go with DevOps uh, because see the problem, one challenge with uh, solutions architect is 
let's say you are a fresher or you don't have uh, experience at all. Let's say you are a QA tester. How are you going to architect the systems, right? Because uh, solutions architects have to understand the challenges of real world uh, architectures. Like if you just put a three tier architecture or a Kubernetes architecture, that's just the first step. Then you will face like, oh, but this thing needs to scale like crazy, like millions of users coming at one time. So you need to modify those architecture or you need to know how to implement security. Whereas DevOps, you can show what you are doing. What I mean by that is, let's say you are a fresher or don't have experience. When you learn DevOps, like Tamzi Uddin was saying, he has, he can show in the GitHub that, look, Mr. or Mrs. Recruiter or Mr. or Mrs. Interviewer, uh, I did this, this is the pipeline I created, this is the infrastructure as code, uh, like you have concrete body of work, right? Uh, so whereas in, you cannot show that I did this architecture, there is no way to like save a picture of architecture in GitHub in a proper way, right? So that's how I would go um, DevOps. Okay, uh, Pankaj. I was network support engineer, two years of experience. I like customer support engineer and I do not have a job since one year. If I learn AWS, Linux and Ansible within six months, can I get a job? So for you, um, the, the way I recommend is to go for uh, uh, operational jobs like ops where um, you will help the DevOps team or the application team. Uh, when something goes down, uh, you will go fix it. So if you learn AWS, Linux and Ansible, that's not going to be enough though, because uh, if you are trying to go into DevOps, uh, you need to know at least one infrastructure as code, uh, because a lot of the problems you face in DevOps is, uh, oh, uh, uh, Pankaj, my DevOps, excuse me, my DevOps pipeline went down, uh, my EC2 did not come up. So problem, probably the problem is something is wrong with the infrastructure as code. So you need to go debug that. Uh, Shashi Kumar, this is a good question. Uh, how many services we can learn in uh, cloud uh, like AWS and Azure for interviews? Yeah, great question, Sashi. Um, so always take these three um, areas. One, compute, two, storage, and uh, number three, uh, networking, right? So these are the three main areas. Everything else is secondary. So let's say uh, compute for AWS. Uh, you need to know the EC2, which is the virtual machine. You, you should know container. Uh, and if you can, serverless, then compute is covered. So basically EC2, uh, EKS or Elastic Kubernetes system and Lambda. For storage, uh, is basically uh, the block storage uh, and the and object storage and the database. So for block storage, you need to learn EBS. Object storage, you need to learn S3. And for database, you need to know one SQL and one NoSQL. So you could, that up to you. If you know MySQL, you could learn RDS MySQL or the basics of RDS. And for NoSQL, you should learn DynamoDB. So that's storage. And then going to network, so networking is like little tough, right? It's like a little complicated. Uh, but the good news is uh, for DevOps and cloud interviews, unless you are going for network engineer interviews or network architect, you are not going to get much networking question. But you need to know what is VPC, what is security group, uh, what is access control group, uh, that kind of stuff, that, like the networking components. Same thing for Azure. I don't know much about Azure, like the service names, but you need to know their virtual machine service and their Azure Kubernetes service. Same thing for their storage. You need to know their object storage. You need to know at least one relational and non-relational database in Azure and the networking components, like the bare minimum of networking components. Um, Pankaj, can recruiter hire me because I have one year job gap? Yeah, that's not a problem really. Uh, okay, if I if I if I look at um, job today, okay. So let me just show this jobs. Okay, so let's say DevOps. Seems like you guys like DevOps a little bit more, right? And here, 
is United States. Look at this, 89,000 jobs. And a lot of you folks are from India, so let's put India. 20, 22,000 jobs, right? So that's like a lot of jobs. Uh, so if you, even if you have a gap, you if you have uh, certification and uh, you have proof of concepts, you did some proof of concept, you should be fine. That's the gap is not a problem. Okay. Um, what do you suggest Terraform or Cloud Formation in the current scenario? Mm. So Sai Kumar asked this question. Uh, so if you are going for AWS jobs, you have to know Cloud Formation. The Cloud Formation, even in Terraform, companies use Cloud Formation uh, because uh, Terraform doesn't support everything. So in some cases, you have the option to add CloudFormation in Terraform script. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> there is a good debate whether it is better to learn multiple cloud a little bit or go deep in one cloud. So, my from my experience, uh, how I got the job and how I see in the field, it is always better to go deep in one cloud. It doesn't matter whether you want to go deep in Azure or GCP or AWS, but you need to be deep in at least one cloud, right? Uh, but yeah, answering your questions, if you are not sure which cloud you want to learn, go for uh, Terraform. Okay, I'm getting a lot of questions, so let's see. Um, Bhavani, for a quick job switch, I can learn cloud because DevOps have more tools and that will take more time. I mean, depending on what kind of job, like when you say cloud job, uh, like what are you gonna do in the cloud? If you want to do development in the cloud or testing in the cloud, yes. And you already have some development or testing background, then it will be easier, of course. Uh, you just learn the cloud concepts, you learn how to run your code and test your code in the cloud, you, you are all set. Uh, but if you don't know anything, I mean, you need to learn cloud as well, so that's gonna take time as well. Okay, um, for a quick job search. Cart Kartike Bajpe, how to get your CV shortlisted in AWS? So AWS gets lots of uh, candidates. So you need to stand out. So let's say, um, uh, let's say Solutions Architect. Uh, so you need to have, they, they're gonna look for experience. Like if you have done something in the Solutions Architecture field, it doesn't need to be in the cloud. Uh, like before I joined as a Solutions Architect in AWS, uh, I, I was a cloud architect, a distinguished cloud architect in Verizon. So I architected um, different systems in the cloud. So I had some experience and they will look at your certifications and your uh, recommendations. Like you know how other people can uh, endorse you for your skills. And if someone who is really highly skilled in uh, cloud endorsed you, it shows. Uh, but if you are new or you are trying to get a cloud job, don't, I don't recommend going for AWS from get go, right? Because why, you have time. Like I did not try to go for AWS from get go. I worked in a different company and then when I had experience, I switched to AWS. So I would recommend uh, working in another company, get some hands-on experience, get some uh, hands-on knowledge and then go for Amazon. Manj Z. Best way to follow up with HR after interviews and how many times is enough? <laughs> and after how long you can follow? Uh, there is no right and wrong answer for this. This is like depending on your interviewer, like the company. Uh, but personally, I wait like a uh, week, like a five days, and then I reach out. Uh, but I don't know, matter how many times is enough. I cannot um, answer that question. Okay. Tamziuddin, I am also a Bengali descent. No, your accent is fine. We should link up in Manhattan or Queens. All right, yeah, admin LinkedIn. Actually, on that note, uh, let me share my Instagram, right? So uh, let's see. Give me one second. So this is my Instagram. Um, so I'm really bad at this social media stuff. I don't know how to do it. I'm like a 41 year old man, right? So uh, so my LinkedIn is raj.agent.off.change. So raj agent of change. 
so I just post some stuff or my personal stuff behind the scenes video my dog so you can see my dog behind me I don't know if you can see I'm gonna move so you guys can see so see uh, she's she's sleeping right there right so this is my dog shadow shadow say hi to the YouTube world so okay so um, yeah so follow me on Instagram and thumbs you then yeah feel free to ping me there um, Okay, going back to live streaming and make me, let me make myself there. There you go. Okay, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, let me check the next question. Um, Sai Kumar, effective way of mastering Kubernetes and EKS. As most of the stuff is containerized these days, if any suggest from your experience. Yeah, man, I mean, so a little bit of plug. I do have uh, courses in Udemy. So if you go to Udemy, um, new incognito window, let's say I go to Udemy, I'll put the links, I'll create a couple of discounts and then I'll share in the description. So if you search EKS, so see my course is highest rated. Uh, this course starts with uh, basics of container. This course assumes that you do not know anything about container. So it starts from there uh, and then it goes and teaches you, uh, where is my thing? Okay, show more, course content, okay? So it starts from Kubernetes basics, then starts from EKS basics, logging and monitoring, EKS advanced concepts, security, Fargate, DevOps. So I cover DevOps in this one. Uh, so it's not like you have to buy a separate course for DevOps, I don't believe in that. Uh, so I go for uh, what is DevOps phases, why DevOps on AWS, intro to ECR and then the DevOps pipeline for container, so a real world EKS project and then a conclusion. Uh, so check it out if you're interested. Uh, so and this is like highest rated. Uh, I also have a couple of other courses. Uh, I have courses on uh, serverless. So if you're interested in serverless, but I would recommend learning container now um, because container is way hot than serverless. So this is my serverless course. Uh, rocking AWS serverless, a real world guide. And so you can see it has also a pretty good rating. Um, and I also have a cloud formation course. So if you are looking for a cloud formation, you can look. Um, but again, you don't have to get my course. I'm just showing, telling that I have. But if you have some other instructor, that's fine too. Um, but yeah. Okay, uh, how to choose from different Docker images or Linux distributions? Like if you want to have minimal size, you can go with Alpine. Yeah, Shubham, like, so that's like a container questions. Like I have a video on a layer of containers. Uh, so if I go to my YouTube channel, uh, how does a container uh, creates the layer and how does it impact the size? Uh, so you can look at this video and how to optimize the size, right? But that's just one thing. I don't know if you mean like if you want to learn a Linux for sysops or operations, then I would go for like uh, Debian Linux. And if you're into hacking and stuff, you can go for Kali Linux. Um, so let's say layer. Uh, so this this one, Docker layers and multi-stage builds. Uh, so this is how you reduce layer size. So I cover some of this here. Uh, okay. Neha, Neha, course from Raj is very good. Thank you, Neha, really appreciate the support. I have bought it. Uh, thank you, Sharat, uh, how did you switch from DevOps to Cloud Architect? So yeah, so I actually started as DevOps because like I said, uh, DevOps, I could show uh, my work. So if you go to GitHub, everything that I did, I saved in GitHub. Oh God, I have to sign in, uh, okay. Give me one second, let me log in. Uh, so the thing I wanted to show is whatever I did, I saved in there so the recruiter can see what I did, right? So that's the that's a pretty important thing. Let me just log in real quick. Okay, give me one second. Okay, so if I go here, uh, see uh, when I did Jenkins Blue Ocean, I saved there, EKS demos, I saved there. Um, so this way a recruiter can see that I have done real stuff and some of this stuff are from years back, right? And how I switched to architecture is once I got the DevOps um, experience, I got into a project for cloud DevOps into my existing company 
And since I already have solutions architect um, experience, uh, then uh, I it was easier for me. I did solutions architect associate, solutions architect professional, and I changed within the company. So that's another thing I tell you guys and girls that don't try to, it's always easier if you can switch in your company um, because your company, you can build some relation, you know what kind of requirement you have, you have the knowledge of the internal applications. So always try to switch within your company, get some experience and then switch outside. Okay, so let's see, I only gonna take a couple more questions, okay? Um, Let's see, I have a Ashish. I have an interview lined up for cloud support engineer for DevOps profile. Um, DevOps profile, any last minute tips you suggest? Cloud support engineer. I mean, I am gonna say what, like whatever I was saying before, right? So you need to, the, you will ask, you will expect questions like, okay, so I have this uh, DevOps pipeline, it went down. Uh, how do you go about uh, fixing it? So you need to tell like, okay, first I will look which phase of the DevOps it failed, uh, and then I'll go look at the logs, and then I'll try to figure out whether it's infrastructure as code failure or uh, configuration failure, etc. You need to you need to know like some of the Git commands, uh, how to merge, fork, all that stuff, uh, and you should know like at least one DevOps uh, tool, right? Either Jenkins, Code Pipeline, etc. Mansi. Best resource to learn Linux? I honestly don't know, Mansi. Um, I I only know the minimum of Linux that I need for uh, a DevOps architect, a DevOps engineer job, but I never did operations uh, in the cloud. Uh, so that part you need to search in Udemy and find out. Magic Matika, okay. Uh, how do I document root cause on the errors uh, behind AWS Lambda functions using deprecated runtime security groups? Any idea? Document root cause of the error. So I'm not sure what do you mean by um, deprecated runtime security groups. Like AWS Lambda writes the logs in um, CloudWatch, right? So that's where you go check for errors. For infrastructure related errors, you can go look at CloudTrail, right? And yeah, I don't know what you mean by deprecated uh, security groups. Okay. Uh, all right. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna end the live stream. But thank you guys and girls for tuning in. I'm gonna put this video in the YouTube. So take a look. So I don't know if some of you joined a little bit later. Uh, in the beginning, I explained like the steps of preparing, how to go into Glassdoor, get questions, how to go to LinkedIn and get interview questions, looking up an interviewer and uh, practicing and all that stuff. Uh, sorry, my dog is barking. And yeah, look at uh, check, check it, check it out. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload the video in the YouTube. And thanks again for tuning in. Have a great week, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.